Hello, my beautiful friends. Hello. Oh, I hope my signal works. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Janet Rourke. I'm a veterinarian in Central Texas. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the essential oil vet here on Facebook and Instagram and on the interwebs. <laughs> I am here. It's Friday. It's Sunday. What day is it? I don't even know. It's Sunday. Um, and every Sunday I go live and answer your questions about animals and essential oils. So if you have a question, go ahead and post it and I will try to get to it. Hopefully my connection is not terribly unstable and you can hear me and let me know if you can see me and hear me. Okay. And I don't know if this is going to work. My husband is watching a football game right now, and I think it's messing with my Wi-Fi. Let me. Oh, it says I'm. I don't know if you guys can see me. Okay. So um, it just froze up, but it's unfrozen now. So hopefully it's okay. I, I'm only showing like one bar, so I don't even know if this is going to work, ah! but there's like 59 of you watching right now. So we're just going to go with it. Post your question in the chat. I do have a quick announcement. Is Hold on. I'm going to see if my husband will turn off his thing. Hey, babe, it's not connecting really well. Can you remember? Oh, thanks. <laughs> we'll see if that helps. Oh my goodness. I made my husband turn off a football game. So hopefully that helps. All right. So the announcement is that I'm doing a webinar in the membership group this Friday for um, essential oils for anxiety and animals. So if you have an animal that suffers from anxiety or stress related problems, then you will want to watch that webinar. And if you are not in that, um, membership. It's really, really awesome. <laughs> and there's a ton of content in there. Um, it's basically like a little encyclopedia for essential oils and animals for years worth of content. And you can access it. Um, and if you don't want to do it on Facebook, that's okay, because we have a membership portal on the website as well. So you'll get access to the membership portal, which has all of my webinars that I've done in the membership group already. And you can hop on live for this one about anxiety and animals, which will be really, really good. Um, it's a really big problem in animals, especially with the pandemic going on. And so I want to be able to help as many animals as I can. And so if you or someone you know is struggling with that in one of their one or more of their animals, or they just want, or you just want to know about it to help more people too. Um, I encourage you to head over there. So if you're already in the group, don't worry. You are going to see that on Friday. And then if you're not in the group, then head over there. It's only $27 for a month. Uh, you can join at a monthly rate or just for one month, or you can sign up for an annual membership, which you, you get basically two months free if you um, sign up for an annual membership. It's worth it, I promise. So very, very low cost. I want as many people in there as possible. Um, and we're just trying to give you guys like the best of the best in there. All right. First question is from Bonnie, Bonnie Holland. Hi, Dr. Jana. You're coming in fine. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, I just got my mom's dog Piper. She has a bald spot on her butt new since October. Is this digestive stress or what? Uh, it could be any one of those things. So I can't really say for sure. Um, but a bald spot, what I would recommend, if it's not red and inflamed, then I would use a combination of um, rosemary, cypress, and lavender. So three to four drops of each of those um, in a 10 milliliter roller bottle topped off with a sensitive skin carrier oil would be awesome to roll on that to help with, with uh, hair regrowth. If it is red and inflamed, then you'll want to use the skin rejuvenating spray, which is a combination of 
um, lavender, copaiba, frankincense, and myrrh, and you can add in some hill chrism as well. Um, it's a really good recipe. You can find that on my website over at essentialoilvet.com forward slash recipes. The skin rejuvenating spray is what that one is called. So go check that out. Oh, good. I think it's working now that he turned off the thing. Um, Fiona is asking about a calf that has a cough. So it depends on the severity. So with a calf, I always worry about it possibly being like an environmental threat. Um, so we want to do, we want to support the airways, but we also want to support the immune system with the calf. So I would recommend using our respiratory support blend or peppermint diluted on the chest. And then orally, you can do um, like our protective blend and um, you can add in even a drop of oregano or thyme uh, to help kind of boost the immune system a little bit well, well to make sure not, it doesn't become something worse than just a cough. So that would be the biggest thing. And you can mix that in with milk replacer if the calf is on milk replacer um, and uh, give it orally that way. <laughs> Patricia, wow, what a good guy. You know, he kind of is a good guy. I, I think I'll keep him around for a little bit. He, You guys, you guys want to know something really cool? I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen because a lot of stuff has to like, all the stars have to align to make it happen. But he asked me if I wanted to go to Hawaii for our 15th anniversary, which is in April. And I was like, yes, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii. That would be amazing. So we have a few connections that might be able to help us out with costs on that. And um, we might be able to use uh, airline points and things like that to help with our airline costs. So I'm just like, I don't want to get my hopes too far up in case it doesn't work out, but I've never been to Hawaii. I've always wanted to go. We never really had a honeymoon. So um, he is really kind of a good guy. Sorry. I'm just like talking about my husband now. Um, yes. Okay. Oh, Renee. That's so awesome. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I can't wait for you guys to come into that webinar on Friday. That's so awesome. <laughs> Oh, chick, I, I can't answer your question. I'm sorry. I can't comment on that. Um, I have a lot of opinions about that. That would be a great question, Chick Fenton, for the membership group. If you're in there, I do talk about some more controversial stuff in there. I have to be super compliant on this because it's a public page. So I really don't want it to get shut down because I love it. And I love you guys. And I love helping you guys on Sundays with this weekly Q&A. Uh, yes. Okay. So Jen has a Frenchie with a little runny nose. So again, we're going to use our respiratory support oils, um, and then some immune supporting oils internally. So you can use the product, one drop of the protective blend internally mixed with food or in a capsule topped off with some olive oil. And then topically you can use some diluted, uh, respiratory support, um, oils. We have cardamom, we have our respiratory blend that you can dilute and put on there as well. And let's see, Susan's asking about arthritis in a dog's hindquarters. So I'm going to be a little biased because I just got back from a week of training veterinarians acupuncture. I was one of the teaching associates, so I wasn't like one of the main trainers, but I helped, helped with teaching veterinarians how to find certain points. And it was very fun. Uh, this was their last in-person session. It's a like six month long course. And next session, I get to be one of the mentors, which is really exciting. So, um, but that being said, arth arthritis and acupuncture, acupuncture is extremely good for dogs with weak hind ends. Um, very, very helpful. And we can do some, some, some Chinese herbs and things like that to help with that. But as far as like essential oils, we have some really good ones to help with that too. I like doing um, copaiba and frankincense internally. Just make sure you're using a brand that has that supplement facts label on the actual label like that. You should have a supplement facts label on there if you're in the U S and um, so that it's safe to be used internally. Um, and then, so one or two drops each, depending on how big your dog is, of frankincense, copaiba, and turmeric. And then topically, 
over the kind of the hips and the back end there. I really like using the massage blend. So diluted massage blend over that area can be really, really helpful. And we talk about that in the Happy Healthy Dog Challenge, which we just had in December. Um, let's see. Linda it says, what oils can help alleviate dry skin on my cat? So what I would really recommend is a combination of things. So dry skin, Skin problems are a manifestation of what's going on internally, but also environmentally. So they've got stuff going on from the outside. Like right now it's winter in, in our part of the world. And so the air is drier. And so having a humidifier in your home can be really help with dry skin, both for you and for your pets that have dry skin. So getting a humidifier like um, the Dawn humidifier, you can actually put essential oils in there and have it work as a humidifier and a diffuser at the same time. That's a really great way to go. Um, adding uh, omega-3 in the diet. And for cats, I like just adding plain sardines to their diet as a treat a couple of times a week. Most cats love it. They go crazy for it. And it's so good for their skin and coat. And it's a really great natural source of omegas um, that are really well balanced. That, um, the other thing you can do is if you have dry spots or things like that, is to um, put some carrier oil like this. Um, here, I'll just show you. I'll show you. <laughs> That's just easier. Um, so put a little bit of carrier oil. So this is just fractionated coconut oil. I recommend doing like a blend that has maybe some jojoba oil in it. Um, and just like a few drops, just like that. So just a few drops. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's not like dripping down my hands, you know, rub your hands together. So your hands are a little bit greasy and then pet your cat backwards pet them backwards along their spine. They kind of don't like it. And then pet them forward. It'll make their fur a little greasy for a little bit. Um, and then let it set there for a little, you don't want it super greasy. So um, just a little bit goes a long way. Um, so you don't want to coat their hair or anything like that. Um, Cause we don't want to cause a pancreatitis or something like that with them getting too much fat in their diet. But um, a little bit can really moisturize their skin. Just try to get down to the skin with it. And you can even like wiggle your fingers like that to get it down to the skin. And, um, and then, uh, if they don't groom it off really well, you can use a damp microfiber cloth and then wipe them down with that afterwards, um, to help kind of get the, the oil, the grease off of their hair. You don't want to get it really off of their skin, but you want to get it off of their hair. So that would be another kind of option you can use, um, in addition to the other things we talked about. So, yay. Um, okay. Amy's like, go to Hawaii. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> I probably have, some of you are probably in Hawaii and you're like, yeah, it's amazing. But <laughs> like, we're, we, we're not looking to have everybody come here. Thanks. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see if we got enough. We'll do one more question. One more question. Yeah, Bonnie, that's what we have is a airline credit card to get points. We're saving them up. Oh, this is a good one. So Katie, we'll end with this one. So Katie says, um, I'm sure this has been asked before, but suggestions for what to use when introducing a new cat about six months old into a house with a seven-year-old male resident cat. So there's a lot of different things you can do. And I would recommend doing some research on introdu introducing um, cats. So the, you for sure do not want to just put them both in the same room and call it good is the first day that they get there. Um, you need to introduce slowly and they need to kind of get used to each other. So I would put the new kitten um, and the new cat in a room by themselves. So set them up with the litter box, some water and some food, kind of a safe area for them to hang out in. And they can greet each other kind of through the door. And if you're new, your um, seven-year-old cat, resident cat, gets a little upset. You can even put up a baby gate. So it's harder for them to get to that part of the house um, and separate them even more. So um, keep them separated, get them, because that way they can kind of smell each other kind of through the crack in the door and without it being too dangerous. And then the, as far as oils go though, the, um, the grounding blend is very, very helpful. So use the grounding blend uh, topically for both kitties. And uh, that kind of helps them get used to kind of that smell. It smells like them a little bit. And um, it's also very helpful in preventing sibling rivalry. We'll just say it that way. And then um, 
And there are some other things that you can do as far as like behaviorally, but slowly introduce them. Um, when you finally do introduce them in the same room, make sure that both of them have a way to escape uh, to their safe place. So the new kitty can escape back to their safe room that they've been in. And the new kitty has another room to go into that there is maybe their favorite place or whatever. And um, like from far away in the room and it just a little bit gradually at a time and they might get used to each other a little faster, but it'll take a few weeks. Try to take at least two weeks to introduce a new cat. All right, you guys, that looks like all the time that I have for, for today. If you're not in the membership group, please go to essentialoilvet.com forward slash members. I hope to see you in there um, this Friday for the essential oils for animals or for anxiety and animals. And we're going to be covering not just dogs in there. We'll be talking about horses and cats and um, all sorts of other animals as well. So I'll see you in there. Friday at 4 p.m. Central Time. If you hop on live, all of the replays are posted in the group and on the website if you do, um, if you are a part of the membership. So I will see you then and I will talk to you later. Bye.